Welcome to our third research lesson. I'm glad you joined. In case you're finding this information helpful, please click that like button and subscribe to the channel and we start our lesson. Today we are going to discuss about elements or building blocks of research. In our previous lesson, we discussed about sources of knowledge, where we say there are three main sources of knowledge. That is personal experience, then reasoning, and also scientific research, which is also called research. So today, we are going to look at the elements of research, which are also called building blocks of research. In your mind, you should have that today. We are going to talk about the language that researchers use. I'm sure at one point in our lives, we have visited a doctor who gave you a prescription that you couldn't interpret. But when you took the prescription to the pharmacist, the pharmacist was able to interpret and give you medication. Why would you think that happened? The reason is because every discipline has got its own language. There is a way how people in the same discipline communicate with each other. And today we are going to discuss about the language of researchers. Just like how a doctor can communicate to a pharmacist because they are in the same field, researchers also need to communicate with each other using terms which are only understood by their fellow researchers. These terms are the building blocks of research as a discipline. They are the ones that are called elements of scientific research. There are about 10 elements of scientific research, but today we shall only discuss two elements, that is concepts and constructs. So let us start with our first outcome, which is concepts. So what is a concept? A concept is something conceived in the mind. That is, there are the building blocks of our thoughts which we translate through speech and writing. In other words, a concept is formed from observation of certain behaviors. What are we saying? In other words, concepts are used for the purpose of understanding and communicating information about objects and events. What are we talking about? We are saying that a concept is the beginning point where a researcher starts to form a problem. Therefore, they begin the process of research by forming concepts because it is by use of concepts that researchers are going to describe the empirical world. Precisely, a concept is anything that describes the empirical world. Simply, a concept is anything the eyes can't see, anything in the observable world that is used to describe events, like a man, that we be saying, a woman, a cup, a school, all those are concepts because they describe the empirical world. Therefore, researchers always begin the process of research by forming and describing concepts of the problems they want to address. So when they have their problem, they first identify the concept as the first step while carrying out research. For example, a problem could be factors influencing nurses' job satisfaction in a busy urban hospital. Now, when we want to pick the concepts that can describe our problem, we can get job satisfaction. You can see it in the problem. Factors influencing job satisfaction, that is also a concept as you can see it in the problem. Busy urban hospital, that is also a concept and workload can also be a concept. So these are the words that are describing our problem because they are the concepts. Another example, your problem could be knowledge, attitude and practices towards waste management in Hoima city. Therefore, your concepts could be knowledge, attitude and practices, waste management. All those can be concepts because they are in the problem and they are the ones we are going to be describing, isn't it? With that background, now let's take a look at the constructs. For constructs are developed from concepts. That means without a concept, you can never have a construct. So now, how can we differentiate between a construct and a concept? That is what I'm going to see. So whenever you have your concept and you deliberately adopt a certain concept for a specific scientific purpose, it automatically becomes a construct. Although, 
some construct can be abstract and may not be directly observable, e.g. satisfaction, lazy, intelligent, because you cannot see someone who is satisfied, you cannot measure it, you cannot measure someone who is lazy, although we shall see how we shall quantify to understand the measurements of some of the constructs which cannot be measurable. For example, our problem is nurses' job satisfaction in urban areas. We are using the same example from concepts so that you can relate where we are getting concepts and constructs. So from this example, nurses' job satisfaction in urban areas. Could you identify concepts before we look for constructs? Put them in the comment section below. From our problem, the term nurse is a concept. But when you limit to particularly those in urban areas, then you leave out those in rural areas because remember our problem is saying nurses in urban areas. But we also have nurses who are not in urban areas, which means when you just talk about a nurse, it is a concept. But when you specifically look for nurses in urban areas, then that is no longer a concept, but it is going to become a construct. Think about like when you're building a house. You may go to town and buy tiles and cement. Those are going to be concepts. But when you reach home, you may decide, I am not going to use tiles anymore. I am going to stick on, on cement, which means cement has become a construct. Then tiles is just a concept because you are not going to use it. The same thing here. Even constructs are the ones you are going to use, but concepts, you are no longer going to use them. So the main difference is, Concepts represent the observable world. We said things you can even see. While constructs serve a specific research purpose. So you had your concept in the first place and you only chose specific concepts. And whenever you choose a specific concept for a research purpose, it is no longer going to become a concept, but it is going to become a construct. In case you have any question, please put it in the comment section. So in our next video, we shall look at our third element, which are the variables. We can end from here. Meet again.